Hello again. This is the fourth part in which we are dealing with electric machine fundamentals and in this part we will discuss the generation of electromotive force, EMF or voltage. And we start by defining Faraday's law. Uh, Michael Faraday in the mid-1800s, uh, he observed, he was one of those who knew that current carrying conductors, i.e. conductors with current in them, either repel or attract, i.e. they behave like magnets. So Faraday uh, started a series of experiments, been working a long time, to see if from magnets he can produce current, i.e. if current can behave like a magnet when it's in a coil, so why not a magnet can produce a current. The breakthrough came once when he moved a magnet uh, to cut the uh, turns of a coil and the voltage was produced. And since then, we know Faraday's law, and this is the only law that we will use. We'll derive it in different format later, but Faraday's law states that the EMF, the voltage induced in a circuit, is equal to the rate of change of flux linking that circuit. Lambda here is flux linkage in wave vapor per turn. And what we can do is we consider a coil like this one. And then what is that lambda? We defined it actually in one of the earlier uh, presentation in the series. But if all the flux lines were linking all the coil turns, then the flux linkage will be n turns of the coil multiplied by the flux phi. Generally, this is not the case. As we see here, the first turn, this turn, is linked only by four flux lines. Similarly, this one, and the middle turn is linked by six flux lines. So lambda in this case is 14. And if you wish to define an effective value of the flux that when multiplied by the number of turns of the coil will give you the flux linkage, you will get the effective turn is lambda over n, which is 14 over 3 vapor in this particular case. And in some books, you will find that they use n d phi by dt. They're just assuming that all the coil turns are linked by the same number of flux lines phi. Now, you remember the right hand rule? If the current is as shown in red, i.e. like the fingers, so the flux lines will be going upward in the center of the coil going around. So this is just a reminder of the directional relationship between current and the flux. And of course, if the current, if the current was in a long coil going like the thumb, then the flux lines will be circles around that conductor. If d lambda by dt what generates e, e, then it's not essential that the flux is produced by the coil itself. This coil shown here, of course, there will be an EMF if the flux, this flux phi changes. There will be an EMF induced in this coil itself. However, if I bring another coil and I put it in the proximity of the first coil, the red coil will be cut by the flux lines, so the flux could be external to the coil. The change of flux or flux linkage can be either by changing the current or by changing the magnetic circuit configuration. Why? Because if you remember from the magnetic part earlier in this series, we found that phi is the magnetomotive force Ni over the reluctance R. This reluctance is L over mu A this is the length of the flux path, and this is the cross-section area perpendicular to the flux lines, and I is the current of the coil. So you can change the geometry, A or L, or you can change I, and that will produce change of phi and the flux linkage. Also, if you look at this red coil here, if I keep moving this coil, closer to the flux line and away from the flux lines like this. That flux linkage of that coil will change. So it can 
flux linkage changes can also be uh, produced by the change of position of the coil. And of course, it can be produced by simultaneous action, i.e. the coil is moving, but the coil itself is carrying current that is changing with time. So it's a combination between the first and second uh, mechanism of ch change of flux. First, we consider the case when the voltage is uh, produced or induced in a coil that is excited by a current. So we have a magnetic core here, and around it we want a coil, uh, which is the blue coil carrying current I. The flux lines, if you apply the right-hand roll, will be like shown in red. Now, if the current, I assume that the current is sinusoidal, i.e. it's I maximum, sine omega t. We know that phi is ni over the reluctance of the circuit, and it will be n over r multiplied by i maximum sine omega t. In other words, if the current is sinusoidal, then the flux will also be sinusoidal. This is maximum, call it, call it phi maximum. So what we can conclude from that is, if the current is changing sinusoidally, then the flux and the flux linkage will also be a sinusoidal waveform in phase with the current. And that's what we have here. The current is sinusoidal and the flux, when the flux lines, the current as shown in this blue arrow, the flux lines will be like shown in red, so it will be as shown in this half cycle. At this point, and just for simplicity, I will also sketch here the current I. The current I will uh, behave like this. At this point, the current becomes zero, and of course the flux becomes zero. Then the current will reverse its direction as shown in green, and the flux lines will change their direction, and we get the other half, which means the flux linkage and the flux will be a sine wave, which is the same uh, sine wave, the same, has the same phase as that of the current, and the EMF differentiate this red equation of lambda, you end up with this, which this is, we can call this E maximum value, it's a cosine, and if you plot, you will find that lambda is shown and the EMF is shown. If in phasors, if we can say this is lambda, E will be another length of vector, but it's 90 degrees. So the EMF produced in this case is at right angle with the flux linkage. We look at salient structure like in machines. We have here a pole south and north. And if you remember, we defined, and as the convention is, if the flux coming out of a surface, we call that surface a north pole. If it's going into a surface, we call it a south pole. So we have south north, north, south here. Have a brown coil, and this coil now is linked by a flux phi upwards. If I move this coil to this position, the coil is linked in a flux phi in the opposite direction. So the net change of flux delta phi is phi minus minus phi will be two phi. And if that happened in a time delta t, that will give you the EMF. So now the magnets are produced by a direct current. The flux is not changing with respect to time, but the position of the coil is changing and we're moving it with certain speed. So this is the speed voltage. You would be familiar with another form of this equation, and we, now we will derive it using uh, 
um, the same equation of Faraday, E equals d lambda by dt. To do this, I'm assuming that there is a flux density B in blue here, pointing downwards. And I have a coil. This is the coil side, another coil side. And the end, the connection between the coil, what's shown here in green, I'm consider considering it an elastic connection. So if it is an elastic connection, in this position here, the flux linking this brown coil, phi, is B multiplied by the area. So it's B multiplied by X, the width here, multiplied by L, which is the length of the, the coil. Now, this side of the coil, the right-hand side, will move. It's elastic connection, so you can see it's stretched a bit here. It's moved delta x, so the flux now will be, in this position, will be BL multiplied by x plus delta x. The change of flux between position 1 and position 2 will give you our flux linkage, delta lambda, BL delta x and find E as d lambda by dt. So divide this equation by delta t, you end up BL dx by dt. dx by dt is the velocity v. The thing to note here is that the flux is perpendicular to the plane of the coil. So there is 90 degrees between B and L and also the velocity V and that's L. If you're studying physics, they will give you flux at certain angle and then you will need to find that the normal component will produce EMF, the tangential component is not going to produce EMF. The main thing to note is in electric machines, we will ensure that B, L, and V are at right angle with respect to each other, and the EMF induced will be given by the product. It is very important that you uh, understand that we arrived at this expression BLV, which you would know from physics, by application of Faraday's law. It's not a new relationship or not new law. All what we did here is we just expressed the flux linkage in terms of the flux density B and the velocity uh, at which the coil is moving. Now we look at a typical machine arrangement. This is a machine winding and we have the coil shown in the first position. This is the position one, and in the dotted line is position two, and the flux density is B1 this side, B2 the other side. If we apply E equals BLV, assuming right angles between flux density, the conductor, and the speed at which the conductor is moving, we have the EMF generated at the coin coil terminal, the EMF as the coil moves from position one to position two is B1LV, B1LV plus B2LV. What we do in machines is we arrange that when one coil side like this one is under, let's say this is a North Pole, the other coil side is under a South Pole. So B1 and B2 are equal in magnitude, but they are opposite in sign. So what we get here, B1 magnitude equal minus the magnitude of B2 equals B. Substitute in this equation, the total EMF in the coil will be 2BLV. So although the EMF directions is reversed because of the reversal of the flux, when they add up, if you have EMF in this side acting like that, 
EMF and that side acting like that. Around the coil, they add up to, uh, to BLV. Observation. EMF generation is not just associated with generator. EMF E will be produced in any circuit that is linked by a flux that is changing with time. So whenever there is change of flux linked the coil or the circuit, there will be EMF. So this EMF is also produced, generated in the motor. But in the motor, we normally refer to it as the back EMF. Why back EMF? Because it opposes the flow of the current into the motor. We will come to that in more detail when we discuss a specific motor topologies. See you next time.